Hello, Joy Horner here again, and I'm going to talk a bit about perineal massage and the need for it, because yet again, I've been asked the question, is it necessary? How do I do it? When do I start it? So I just thought I'd do a really quick video and share that with people. So perineal massage, is it necessary? Now, in theory, no, but in practice, it can be really valuable to some people. So I definitely say that not all people need to do it or want to do it and that's absolutely fine. And I think I'd like to start by reassuring everyone that your body is going to stretch. You know, we all know what Ina Mae Gaskin has talked about <laughs> for years and years. And I heard her at a conference once and it was the most fantastic talk. I've probably heard her at several conferences. <laughs> This may be two or three different conferences put into one in my memory. But basically, that our bodies are designed to stretch. They are designed to accommodate a baby coming out. Um, and we know physiologically that the hormones in pregnancy, particularly hormones like relaxin and progesterone, help our smooth muscles to relax and even more so at the end of pregnancy. You know, it just increases and increases and we get stretchier and stretchier and yeah, it's all great. So our vagina and perineum and the tissues around it all have this natural elasticity, which is enhanced by oxytocin. So when we're in love, when we're relaxed, when we're breathing easily and not holding our breath, those tissues naturally relax don't they and we all know this from love making we all know if we've tried to make love in a hurry you know if you've got kids already you know and you've got <laughs> you know, 10 minutes before the school run you know and you suddenly get the urge oh come on come on let's let's have a quickie um you haven't had the chance to get the natural lubrication going and the oxytocin going and it can be a bit ouchy can't it can be a bit ouchy, a bit squeaky. <laughs> Whereas if we're receptive, if we've had foreplay, if we've had time to get really relaxed and our tissues get really engorged down there, don't they? And they open naturally, ready to be receptive to our partner. Um, it's the same in, in childbirth. You know, if we can relax our bodies and relax our mind and maybe control our breathing a little bit, those tissues are going to do their job fantastically. Now, the problem comes that, you know, sometimes it is hard to do all that. And it's particularly hard in a, a first vaginal birth. You know, it might not be your first baby, but a first vaginal birth when you don't have the um, bodily knowledge that, that that is what that part of your body can do. Back to Ina Mae Gaskin now, talking about sphincters. It's all to do with sphincters. So our sphincters work best when they can relax. You know, we know if we want to have a poo and we sit on the toilet, you know, with the door locked, you know, we can normally relax our anal sphincter, let go and have a successful poo. Maybe if we're in a public toilet or we're in a toilet and the door doesn't lock, you know, and we're frightened of being disturbed, it can be a lot harder to let go. Um, yeah, so Ina Mae Gaskin reminds us that we have, you know, vaginal sphincters, we have the, the cervix is a sphincter and they act like any other sphincter. You know, if we're frightened, if we're tense, they, they close. And if we're relaxed, they, they can open and relax. And Ina Mae Gaskin says something wonderful about, you know, we don't know, you know, as women and people who don't identify as women that have vaginas and, you know, birth canals. We don't know what our bodies can do because we don't get to see them. So most of us know, even if we've never seen it, that a man's sexual organ, you know, his penis can go from this to that if we're lucky, <laughs> and back again, you know, that's what it does. It engorges with blood, it grows, it recedes again. Now, our tissues do the same. They do the same. You know, we just don't see them. I mean, I do as a, a 
former midwife. Um, I do. I see what, what vaginas and yonis and birth canals do. And they do indeed, you know, go like this. Baby comes out and then they go back to that again. It is elastic. It is a sphincter. And Ina May Gaskin made a lovely analogy. She said, have you ever stood behind a cart horse when it poops? <laughs> if you ever have, you know... <laughs> that you've seen that anal sphincter go from nothing to huge to let a poop out and then it goes straight back again so that's a really good visualization to have in your mind as well as you know it might make you laugh if you remember that so how can we re be reassured that our bodies will stretch you know well i've told you they will i've told you about the the hormones i've told you about the anatomy and physiology and how our mind can affect these things but how about if we could reassure ourselves about that stretchiness? And that, to me, is where um, perineal massage comes in. In the reassuring yourself that this is something that your body can do and will do in childbirth. And also to get you used to the sensations of childbirth. Because if you've not felt that part of your body really stretch before, it can be alarming sometimes. And it can prevent people pushing their baby out because they're frightened of that new sensation so it's always worth doing um, now how do you do it now I picked up a few teaching aids um, and none of them were, were quite what I was looking for you know I've got this lovely external genitalia here and I can't really show you what you do it's just a bit big and a bit cumbersome that's good to show how a baby comes out and then I've got what's called a, a perineal cloth. So it's a, a fabric that goes over the, the anatomical pelvis that I have. But look at how unattractive that is. You know, there's a big hole and it's it's really sort of um open <laughs> and shriveled. And I've never seen a vagina like that. I've never seen labia like that. You know, it's just, it doesn't do the job, does it? So although I could show you on that, it's it's just not appealing at all <laughs> um, yeah and I'd rather that you could look at something so when I'm teaching in people's homes and um, I'm doing antenatal appointments and they ask about perineal massage I say have you got a tea towel handy or a yeah hand towel any sort of towel and I can sort of show you what to do on that so what I do I just fold it up now, that to me looks much more like female genitalia than either of my teaching aids. And one of them costs quite a bit. <laughs> so we'll go with this. We'll go with, you know, the outer labia, the inner labia um, and the, the vagina. It's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. So what you're doing in perineal massage, you're getting used to the stretching and you're feeling the sensations in the direction that the baby's coming in. So the ba if you imagine that your, your bottom's here, your anus is about here, and this is your pubic bone. So you're lying on your back and um, yeah, and you, you, you can start off. You don't need lubrication. Now, I've never met anyone in pregnancy who's dry. You know, it just doesn't happen. And the further on in pregnancy you get, the juicier you get. So wash your hands. Um, you don't want to be introducing any sort of infection from the outside and pushing it in. Make sure your nails are short because you are going to be, you know, putting pressure. You don't want to damage the delicate tissues inside. Um, but yeah, so you can start off with one thumb inside and just pull down because the direction the baby comes in it goes down towards your bottom and then forward. So it will be, look at it from the side, maybe it'll be coming down and pressing in that direction and then coming out. So you can mimic that with your, th with your thumb. You can press down and you can also move forward. You can use two fingers and I can't really do this whilst holding that. So you're gonna to have to imagine um, Perhaps if I use these two fingers, you can stretch that muscle side to side, stretch side to side. Now, it's really useful if while you're doing this or that or the pulling forward, you can breathe and relax. 
So press down and imagine that area relaxing and releasing and you might find it gets even stretchier um, and then release. You can also stretch a little bit down the sides, particularly, you know, the inner labia, just a little bit, just a little bit either side um, because sometimes we get little tears around here. Um, the other thing I want to say is how useful this can be if, if you use it as a way of connecting with that part of your body and maybe even healing past trauma. I had a wonderful client who described how she healed um, trauma that she'd had in her past that involved her, her vagina. And we just had the standard talk about perineal massage. And I said, yeah, look, you know, you can do this and you can do this. And, and she went away and did something incredible. So her and her partner very gently and systematically um, worked with just gently touching different areas. And if she felt a strong emotion come up, she could cry or, or you know, release it somehow, talk about it. She could tell her partner to stop you know, and wait while she breathed deeply and, you know, just composed herself and was OK to say, OK, you can you can try something different. Um, yeah. And she found it incredibly healing. So I have to thank her. I would name her if it weren't for confidentiality, but I have to thank her so much for teaching me that. Another client taught me about the sexuality part of this. Now, our vaginas, our yonis do not exist in isolation. They are part of the whole, aren't they? They are part of our body, part of our um, emotional, spiritual, you know, part of us, as well as being a piece of anatomy. So if we can make the connection with pleasure whilst touching this part, um, and this isn't, you know, <laughs> this isn't anything perverted or weird, you know, it's, it's not... <laughs> It's not sex talk, you know. <laughs> um, but if we can make the association in our brain between pleasure and stretching, when it comes to the time of pushing your baby out and feeling the stretch, your mind will remember pleasure, relax, and that will make it all a lot easier. Even prevent tears, who knows? I haven't done any studies on my clients, I wish I had. <laughs> Um, so yes, make it part of love making if you can. You know, even if it's you know just a bit of foreplay. You know, make sure you're aroused, that you're happy, that you're comfortable, um, and then see if you can do a bit of um, perineal massage, or your partner can. And it's usually your partner has to help you out at the end of pregnancy because <laughs> it can be really hard to reach around your bump and get in the position. Um, so yeah, but partners are normally willing to help with this. Um, yeah, and we want that that pathway, that connection between the mind and the emotions and the body. We want it all to work together when you're having your baby. So, yeah, I think that's all I've got to say on that. Can I say anything else about perineal massage? Start it about, I don't know, 34, 35, 36, 37 weeks of pregnancy. No point starting it early in pregnancy because the, the stretchy capacity won't have reached its maximum you know you'll be working real hard trying to get that to stretch and yeah just don't wait for your body to do it naturally later in pregnancy third trimester well into the third trimester and you know you'll have enough stretchiness there anyway i think that's all i've got to say about perineal massage any questions as usual leave me some comments below but that's my experience of it. And my my clients have found it really, really useful. You know, there is some evidence to show that perhaps it does lessen the risks of, of tears or, or severe tears. Um, and I'll sign up to that, you know, as long as. Yeah, yeah, there's that connection between mind and body. I think that's what helps the breathing as you're relaxing. That helps um, and giving birth in love. That really, really helps if you're not stressed and you're not tensed. So that's it for today. And thank you for joining me.